no matter what happens, you know, no matter what happens in the in the week, no matter what happens in the month, no matter where we go or where we come, where we where we end up, we should always meet every Tuesday and Thursday to talk about art because we want to draw, we want to draw better because we have stories to tell and that is the weird mystery. That is the overarching mystery that brought us all here today to sit together in this stream is our desire to draw um and let's draw let's talk about how to draw better because we really want to do it better um before i get started uh this tuesday uh, this thursday the 19th is going to be the official last day of 2019 um <clears throat> crazy year finally coming to a close It'll be that really, really hilarious challenge I posted up a couple months back, uh, the ho the Santa Wizard Battle. Um, so that will all be posted for Thursday. I will look at every single submission if I can. Um, today's critique was going to be about the elves. Uh, so an elf challenge to characterize the name of the classic Christmas reindeer into character designs. So I'm going to be talking about that. I might not look at every submission for that because I want to get rolling and I want to get into another piece that I wanted to look at for a while now just to redeem myself from last week. <clears throat> Porsche Studio is going to be on sale starting this week. I'm not sure when. It could start tonight depending on when I, again with that whole workload thing, I might not be able to put out the trailer tonight and start the gears on the sale um, promo and all of that tonight. It might be tomorrow, maybe as soon as I get home from the gym. Um, I really don't know. I can't tell. It's so difficult to broad, uh, forecast any kind of prediction in this perfect storm that is my life at the moment. <clears throat> so I will try my best to get the sale out as soon as possible. Maybe just start the sale tonight and then upload the promos and the videos tomorrow or whenever I get a chance to do it. That way you guys can get in on your sale time, buy your presents. If Portrait Studio is going to be gifted to anyone, it's very easy to do. You just have to send in a form submission and we can figure that out for you. Um, if you want to send the download to a, to someone who ha is going to receive it as a gift, if they cannot buy it themselves. Um, and uh, that's it. So the 19th is going to be our final day, Wizard Battle. Portrait Studio sale will start ASAP. And today's critique hour is going to be about the uh, elf designs. If you are not a patron already, please become a patron. Uh, supporting this channel will help get this community going and uh, prolong its longevity for posterity and um, and, and, and it's, it's very important for us to, to, to remember that this community is fueled by you guys. It's not just me at the, at the helm, at the, is that what it is? I don't know words anymore. <clears throat> it's, it's all, it's fueled by you guys. You guys are the, are the main fuel behind this uh, community, why it's independent um, and why I'm independent. I have not broken 100k yet for some reason. I do not have a channel rep. I don't work with marketing and I don't work with any agencies or anything like that. This is all just me doing this, just pure naked in the dark. Um, so if you guys want to help me and, and prolong this, this channel's existence and this resource for us being able to draw and sit together every Tuesday and Thursday and talk about art, um, you can just join as a $1 patron. There's no other requirement. There's not even any requirements, really. It's just $1 patron. Um, that's $12 a year. And if any, if everybody joined on Reddit, we really wouldn't need any marketing or any representation at all for my channel. I wouldn't need to break 100K. If everybody joined as a $1 patron, it would be exactly what we need. I would never need to hire a marketing team or anything like that or have massive percentages taken out of whatever we make. So uh, if you guys can head over to patreon.com slash um, if you want your work submitted, so your New Year's resolutions, I'm going to join more critique hour, I'm going to upload more work, I'm going to do a 14 day challenge. In order to do that, you must go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon. Um, that's where you will be directed. You must join the Reddit in order to have your work critiqued by me. There's no commitment required. Don't have to pay. You don't have to be a patron. Everyone asks me this. I'm not sure where the confusion comes from, but it happens. You don't have to be a patron to join Reddit. Reddit is free. Reddit is a free resource. You can join it. You upload your work. You talk. That's it. Um, Patreon is on the side. It's not requirement. It's an option. And, um... Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, I'm even on Snapchat now. Uh, the old lady got on Snapchat. <clears throat> uh, so those are all places you can find me. 
I upload regular announcements on Facebook if you're a Facebook user. If you're an Instagram user, I upload there. Twitter, if you're a Twitter user, you can find me everywhere, anywhere. Um, let's get started. So uh, it has been a while since I've done a proper critique, so excuse me if I'm rusty. I am fighting some demons that are still over my head right now. They still loom and and, and, and battle and, and taunt and hurt, and I'm trying my best to fight through um, all the pain that I'm in daily. I'm sorry if it's made me a little more <laughs> aggro. <laughs> I'm definitely finding outlets. Uh, one of which is intensive league streaming. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if it's made me a little bit more rough on you guys than usual, I am sorry. Let's start with this. <clears throat> so, it was supposed to be classic reindeer names. And you're supposed to project that on a character design as if it's a character design for like a game or a show. Um, and there are some issues. One of the most important issues is your initial instinct, your initial reaction to a design, if you're the critiquer or if you're the artist, stepped away for 30 minutes, came back. Sorry, one sec. And you, um, and you're like, okay, something feels off. They feel weird. They feel like adults wearing heads or masks or something like that. And that's exactly what's happening. It's uncanny. So, let, let's talk about what you're supposed to be doing, which is basically, it's if you guys heard of chibis, they're like little anime ding-dongs. They just make no sense, but they're cute, okay? And they are just supposed to be cute. So when you're talking about elves, you're basically working with this trope. This is a trope. Large head, small body, short body, maybe the size of the head. That is what we would call cute because it reminds us of a toddler or an infant. <clears throat> what you're doing is this size head plus the missing neck. You see how the neck is the missing aspect? There's no neck here. Just like in babies. Babies don't have necks. Imagine if a baby had a fully formed neck and then had the baby body. That would be <laughs> very creepy. So the missing neck just means that, you know, the spine isn't fully developed. There's no curvature to the spine because the baby hasn't started walking yet. <clears throat> It's not that the baby doesn't know how to walk, it's the baby can't walk because it's not structurally formed yet to walk. So it's not going to have all the basic neck, spine, shoulder, hip business. It doesn't have enough bones to do it yet. So when we're talking about elves, okay, we're talking about cute. And this, 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 this was just an interpretation. You could have gone for a long spindly evil elf, but it's Christmas and we're talking about something nice. So I don't know why you would go in that direction, but if you're dark and you have that kind of style and that's what you have gone for, it would have been a different critique today, but I'm aiming for what you intended as cute chibi type characters. Um, elves equals cute, cute equals cuteness triangle, which means shorter, the better than wider eyes. Um, so basically infants. Um, babies. So infant means that the body cannot have fully formed calves and Gaston boots and, and it just does not work. It does not work. So you need to maintain the same gestural character, but being anatomically recognizable or equivalent to the body of a toddler to maintain the cuteness, read from the audience. The audience is interpreting their own knowledge back onto the screen. So I know what cute is. Cute is baby human. That is what I'm going to use to communicate cute to my audience using baby human. <clears throat> There's no way around it unless, of course, animal cuteness, but it's all the same. Big eyes, big head, small body, short body, which is not what you've done here. All right, you've given us a fully formed body. The way to fix this, the quick fix, um, would be to... <clears throat> okay, so we are unlocking the layer to just shrink this guy's head ever so slightly. And then he'll just become a cute, like, character. So do you see what happens when I give him neck length? All right, so he has a neck now, and that means that he's no longer deformed because deformed just means disproportionate. Write that back to me. So if you know, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm just that gross teacher that burps and 
sneezes in class now and just deal with it. Um, yes, so deformed means disproportionate. So they looked deformed. All right, this one kind of had a neck. Very, very feminine gesture here. Um, it's mostly because you've created an hourglass shape instead of giving us that typical um, anime attitude, hips forward, I'm a hot guy, secret, you know, secret mushy guy, but really tough on the outs outside type fella. So we are shifting that this way just so that that hip is more outward. I'm really not sure if that did anything at all. No, it did not. I have to move the whole thing. Okay, so he has something of a neck, but the head size is still creepy. And that's the word I'm using. That's the word you deserve to hear because you completely overlap two different age groups. And I'm not talking about 14-year-old body with 11-year-old body. I'm not talking about gray area. I'm talking about you use the toddler's head size on a 30-year-old body. <laughs> okay? Or like a 20-year-old developed athletic body. You deserve to hear the word uncanny. Um, never confuse age groups like that because that leads to uncanniness that makes no sense. So we shrunk the head because the body grew around the head. All right, can you guys write that back to me? The body grows around the head. The head does, does, it grows, of course, but it doesn't grow and just keep growing proportionate to how the body grows. The, but the head grows less than the body. The head grows, but not in the same amount of changes your body experiences in length and width and, and body mass and fat. So that's how we make these guys look a little bit. So if this is what you were going for, for this body type, that's what you do. The female gets away with it a little bit, but she also has this really deformed shoulder thing going on. And we need to just give her back her shoulders and her neck. All right, so this is option number one. You guys are confusing age groups. You are creating a dysfunctional body type of having disproportions. So deformed and dysfunctional just means disproportionate. And then what we have uh, after is just the age group overlap, <clears throat> which I already said, I guess. Did I already say that? All right, so just look at them before. Look at how scrunched his head was. Bad character design terrible not because you chose the wrong color or because you didn't do the right thing or because you didn't express yourself no none of that funny business it's because of fundamental anatomical mistakes all right there is even anatomy found in style anatomy can be found in style um um, style can be found in anatomy. You can stylize and still maintain an anatomical, functional character design. So let's let's go with the original head size. How would we adjust this body to be to match the original head size? So it's actually very simple. We're shrinking every aspect. So we are shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And he'll soon start to look like a little person. All right, so we shrunk the shin bones. We're going to shrink the thigh bones. Shifting this upward. He'll still look athletic. So we're still trying to maintain it. It's just a tug of war, a slight tug of war before things start to look right. All right, and then we're going to capture his entire scale. Move that down. Oh my, oh my. So many ages overlapping. So many different body types overlapping. Like, even genders. Um, we're going to take it easy with that shoulder that you created. So we're going to give more of a circular shape to the shoulders. As if it is just a slightly overgrown toddler. And when you watch like Arthur Christmas or you watch something like that, look at the body types, but just cover the head up. Because really, it's the portraits that are throwing you guys off. You guys want to draw masculine, you give him cheekbones and a brow bone, and then you end up with, you know, you're tricking yourselves into thinking you need more masculinity. You don't. 
The portrait could have done all the work and the body could have been maintained as one individual age group instead of 17. <clears throat> so I shrunk the body and I'm going to shrink the feet. That was a big giveaway for the age. Did not feel like it was a cute, but handsome, but strong, but still an elf. I did not feel like that. And I don't want to over-represent the shin bones. I don't want to sh try to like recreate any f human athletic. Elf athletic should look very different from human athletic, but still, he's still triangular. His, his mass is still at the top, which is what looks like athletic. And even these guys need a slight little shoulder. I'm going to get rid of that very, very human cheekbone. Very, very human masculine specific brow bone it's still very masculine though and I'm gonna get rid of the chin elves are again toddlers we're getting rid of a lot of the toddler I mean getting rid of a lot of the 30 year old and leaving behind more toddler the portrait can stay like this the portrait can stay masculine I've seen a kid that looks like this I'm going to Shrink that a little bit, and I'm gonna bring the mouth closer so the triangle is more defined. Okay, so we have less of that length that was going on before, more elf. Do you see how we're not missing the shoulder line that you had? And even here, the head is too big. Like, even in my edit, the head is too big. And let's just take a look at how it looked like before. Oops. <clears throat> okay. Do you see that? Odd. Very odd. Long legs, short body, big head. Short neck, big head. Deformed. All right. So here is a little more a little bit more cute. I would say the 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 hairline is what's killing him right now because on top of all that you had a you had an aging hairline. So that's really what made him, what pushed it over the edge for the most part. He looked like he was aging. Like again, 30 year old, 40. I'm aging. I have a ton of gray hairs in my head. In just a year, I got like like 50 sprouted. In just one year just to give you a scope on how stressful my life has been in the last like 11 months anyway I don't know why I went there um just because I'm turning 30 in June <laughs> it just feels weird I cannot believe I'm turning 30 in June but happy birthday almost to me because I technically have another birthday Jan January 1st is my official birthday as well which is also um a representation of how stressful my life has been. All right. I'll be fine. All right, so I'm moving all of this over, just extending the distance between the eyes. Now I'm now I'm characterizing deliberately because why do I have a second birthday? Because I I am um, because of the war. Anyway, um, just giving him more elf-like features because we're moving towards female when it comes to the portrait. <clears throat> and you'll just see in the before and after, really. There's no point in trying to describe what I can show. See that hairline? <laughs> and the eyes being a little close together. <laughs> after. Okay. And then the actual before. Okay, and then this is the after after and honestly the first after and it it really the head really is too big So so I yes, I am officially 30 in a couple days, which is oh my god I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown right in the middle of the class <laughs> I have two birthdays because My official birth the actual birthday is unknown because the war in 1990 the Gulf War 
um, lots of documents were destroyed or something like that. And um, my mom doesn't remember my birthday or remembers the general time I was born, which is the summer, but not the day or the or the um, time of day. <clears throat> but she remembers like nighttime. Um, so I just have a very general birthday week, but it could be June or July, which is weird because the first Gulf War started in August and she's telling me it's June, but the Gulf War didn't officially start until August. I don't know. That's why I'm 30 in a couple of days because <laughs> the government in Canada gave everyone a basic birthday because we didn't know what our birthdays were, which was January 1st. That explains my stupid storytelling skills. So before, no, not really before this, I would say works better as an elf or maybe the reindeer are people you know they just transform into reindeer sometimes so you have these two and this is so boring we've seen this a hundred times this is oh cut his head off this is more interesting and then i just want to get rid of that jawline which is still very troublesome I'm the nana in this channel. <laughs> 30 is the new 15. <laughs> uh, so basically you were born every night time. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm Canadian, but I don't live in Canada. I live in the U.S. I live in New York. But yes, I'm a Canadian. All right, so I'm just correcting some of this. I'm just giving him more space in between his eyes. As you can see... That's given us this really cool, quirky look in his anatomy, which is very elf-like, yeah? And basically, that's what you're doing when you're thinking elf. Even if it's a male elf, you're still going to use feminine features. But he generally looks a lot more masculine than, I would say, a female with a thinner eyebrow. So if you were to, if you were to of the same species or of the same peoples, want to create the female version, you just... Thin out the eyebrow and give us more of an eyebrow arc, and we'll get a female read. Okay? But it still looks great. So I hope this has revealed to you the error of your ways. Alright? We don't want that boring human one. We want to shrink the features so it looks like a toddler wearing a snow, snow pants and a snow jacket, like you know, those big ones. Do you guys remember those snow pants with the suspenders? Those were the best. <clears throat> Seems like only yesterday I was in my freaking class. Now I'm turning 30. Grade 2 class. Uh, performance. Did you really freeze? Oh, crash. Bitch. It's... It now. Um, it's so funny, when clicking on performance, the performance dropped. You can't buy, you can't buy shit like that. This, 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 you don't can't make this stuff up. I, it, it crashed when I tried to click on the performance tab. <laughs> anyway, um, before. <laughs> after. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I have no soul. Before, after. Let me, um, yeah, before, very unusual, after a little bit more elf-like, I would say I would, I would watch this, and he's the stronger of the elves, he's the handsome one, he's the prince, and, um, all of these are going to be under the same changes, all right, and the only reason why he looks short is because he's beside tall people, like, if we were to... It's not, it's not, you think, you think you can fix this just by shrinking them. No, that's not gonna, it doesn't work like that. You can't just shrink them and expect it to work because these are, do you see how they look weird? Have you ever done a character design and watched all your characters stand by each other and wonder why one looks like another artist painted it and why one looks like you drew it and you like one half of one and you don't like the other half of it? That's because you have not had, you haven't done any uniformity in the anatomy of the character, of the character. So we've done so much character design between astron, I mean astron, what? <laughs> between apprentice, and you see where my brain is? This just gave me a general vicinity of the word I needed, not the actual word. So astronomy and apprentice are right beside each other, apparently, in my brain, my brain gave me astronomy. 
Um, in my apprentice, in my in the uh, Discord apprenticeship for Patreon, we've been covering all kinds of character design. We've talked about this a lot. We also did this for the Halloween challenge and the public community challenge in Halloween. Also talked about this. You have to create a uniform anatomy between all your characters. So these peoples would never have a body type like this. It's very unusual. So it kind of seems like half human, half elf at this point. Where this would be like complete elf. Um, uh, so for the, I guess the female would be a better thing to cover. Um, but yeah, it would be the same idea. Keeping the head size the same, but getting rid of the longness long it just seems like like two spaces in between each letter typed out long <laughs> that's how I'm interpreting this um, and this one can be as easy a fix as um, as this so we're keeping her hips wide or shrinking her legs. We've shrunken them. We're going to widen her body. And those feet, those feet, my transformed it a lot, but those feet are supposed to be small. And right now they're huge. They're chonking feet. All right, that's a problem. And then there's the arms. So you see how we got rid of the elbows? We got rid of any major angles because they're so, sh they're so short and they're so small they can't have major angles do you see what I'm saying because they're just tiny so they don't really they don't really get the acute angles of of a or like the the open angles or like the right angles of a skinnier person because they're not long and lanky long and lanky means that you would have those really sharp right angles for upper and and, and uh, forearm so we're getting rid of that and we're curving into a very circular silhouette, every major angle, including the knees. We don't, we don't really, they're not really that long. It just goes back to that like Michelin tire body type of a baby. You know that Michelin, Michelin man? Just chonky. And then there's just a uh, shrinking. And then enlarging. And I'm just tucking. Okay. And if you have to, if you want to, give her curvature, give her curves. She is Cupid after all. You can. And it's very easy. You just have to think hips. So you want to keep things very, very generalized. So it's just a, a slight hint at a waistline. Nothing exaggerated. And the waistline needs to be carried all the way up. So it's not a low belt with low human hips. It's more of a very toddler-like curves, which it doesn't exist, which is why this is so weird to do, so difficult to pull off. But we're raising the curve up. So right under, I guess I would say, the, the, the waistline, which typically belts sit on the hip, right? And that's where we kind of start the outer uh, curve of the thighs. Here, the belt is under the rib cage. And the thighs start under the ribcage, which do, which doesn't exist, which isn't real. We're skipping the longness of the torso, and then just this this elbow is pissing me off here. So you can give her that. That's just really bastardized. You can give her that curvature without it being overly sexualized. But if you want that, if that's what you're going for, like you, it is like a young adult type, not really for kids, but even if it's for kids, you can, you can create waistlines and have, you know, in, in movies for children, like let's say um, the recent Grinch movie, 
They gave hips to the mom. They gave her a basic hourglass shape because kids still recognize those body types. But if you wanted a more feminine motion to the body type for the female elf, you can see how very, very different. Weight is on the bottom here. Weight is at the top here between the male and female. And you can see how weird he looks. All right, and I just do not like this smile. You could have done a lot without that extra bit. This is overrated. This little cheek indentation, super over overrated in characters. You don't need it all the time. And cartooning. Everybody uses it. Stop using it. Find another way to represent it because it is too close to... Uh, I would say human caricatures. You know, when you're trying to make something read as human. Do you see how much more stoic he feels without the indentations on his lips? Do you see how much of a, less of a perv he feels without that extra <laughs> bit on the edge of the lips? Even the edge of the nostrils. Too much information. You're indicating too much. They're supposed to be elves. Don't indicate too much of what's happening in their anatomy. You have the upper, you know, indentation for the button nose and the nostrils. You can keep that and that alone. Don't overdo the bridge either. So this bridge is nice. Just to keep things cute and uniform. Do you see how I'm making all of them look like they were painted by the same artist? Because we're getting rid of any extra. He actually looks like Vegeta now that I do that. <laughs> and then for him to look a little more stern... I would just lower that so he seems like he's the Leonardo of the of the pack. He's also wearing blue. He has double expression. You want to make him look like a troublemaker? Connect that expression so you have the same. And then now that we got rid of that extra bit, we can just elongate the mouth. Okay. Character design is all about uniformity, uniformity in the way you pulled off the faces, uniformity in the male-female. All females should have pretty much the same indicators, all, all males should have the same. Um, if, you're not, if you're going for a uh, deliberately effeminate male, you have to find a balance. You cannot overlap male-female anatomy too much, you cannot overlap body types. You cannot overlap age groups because it is uncanny and weird. So make sure that you are going 100% in one direction. Um, and because you're already so far removed from realism on so many levels, so, so much has been factored into the final product of your sketch. So you have your, your style, you have your influences, you have how much anatomy you're keeping, you have the madness of your line work, whether or not it's good. You have style inconsistency, you have texture inconsistency. Why would you show every little fiber like that? That's what I mean by texture inconsistency. You have this strange representation of hair shine, but no shine in the boots. Like it, That's what I mean. Um, because you're already so far removed, you have so many mistakes to make, you cannot afford uncanniness. Um, so you have to start, you know, before being more strict with your output after. Feels a little bit more cute, feels like elves. Definitely read still in the realm of the character's in intended uh, uh, trope. Before, after. So in bullet points, for those who are watching, because many have popped in, um, what are some of the major concepts I've covered so far? What are the major write that back to me's that I've covered? <clears throat> so I'm just waiting. All right, so character design needs uniformity. Having consistency, have consistency between features and your technique for creating a read in order to make all pieces feel cohesive. Uh, a true Christmas elf Vegeta. 
Um, Leonardo da Vinci? Don't know. <laughs> Cheek indentations are overrated. Dimples are overrated. It's not dimples, Benjamin. It's the indentation at the edge of the lip, the wrinkle that, that happens when a character smiles. Super overrated. Do not use it unless you want your work to read as like Western, like cartooning. You know what I'm saying? Like ye old, ye old cartoons. Hannah Bar 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 Barbera or whatever. And you know, ye old boomer art. <laughs> Get the fuck, I'm joking, I'm joking. Man, everybody hates boomers nowadays. Basically, that wrinkle is the boomer wrinkle, all right? Because it's just, we don't need it anymore. Art and style has been, and anime did a beautiful job of helping things, I mean, before anime went and shot itself in the foot, um, anime did a beautiful job at helping us create the common denominator for all features between tropes. It did a great job with that. And that's like as far as it went. <clears throat> um, so female body needs weight near the bottom. Male body needs weight at the top. Good. Consistency and character design to bring together the piece. Don't mix age symbols. It leads to uncanniness. The body grows around the head. The head stays uh, in size relatively with the rest of the body extends. While the rest of the body extends in height in some cases width. Most cases with females it extends in width. Uh, mixed tropes. Large body. With chibi and cute characteristics like the large head and small body, cannot work in harmony to create an effective character. They become uncanny. Beautiful job, Daniel. Nice to see you again. Um, imagine being a boomer. <laughs> okay, yield boom tune. <laughs> exactly. Isn't Tom a boomer? We love boomers. <laughs> Uh, TV, big head, small body. The objective is to be cute. Children features because you're talking about elf. So the, you know, those little notes I started off at the front, uh, at the big, at the start of this class, um, was us identifying the trope. So first and foremost, the, the note at the top of your notes, your notes, right, right at the top of that, is identify the trope. All right, write that back to me. When you identify the trope, basically every story that's ever been written has already been repeated so every story that's being written right now has already been told um we have specific roles in a plot that carry the plot and move the plot in different directions i just smacked my water bottle and we have tropes that fit these roles we have the femme fatale we have the the the, the, the love interest we have the hero we have the perseus we have the achilles we have the fat dumb king we have the fat uh greedy king we have the the the, the cute fat king we have very very basic repetitive tropes everywhere and we see them in real life as well it's back and forth art imitates life life imitates art back and forth so <clears throat> identify the trope yes because we identified the trope we found the body type that helped us make this read all right so let's talk about the before and after how do you guys feel about the before and after? Do you feel like it's a more just representation of Elf personifying a character type of the reindeer? <coughs> so remember, the reindeer don't really have a role in this. The reindeer are just us grabbing a title and a, and a personality type. You weren't supposed to invest reindeer anatomy <laughs> into your character designs. So that's okay if you guys did not. Um, apply reindeer anatomy to your character designs. Um, I just noticed my mic is super sensitive on OBS. I'm so sorry if I've been talking super loud this whole time. I'm like screeching in your ears. <clears throat> I tropify the indent, ident, exactly. Uh, art imitates life and vice versa. Big legs. All right, so identifying the trope helped us define a body type gave us a more uniform design for the characters and allowed us to read elf without depending too much on the ears because the ears were doing all the work man and it was not working when the ears when you have to when you have to depend on one prop to do all the work you've been a bad artist bad bad um came for the art state for the young and analysis of archetype <laughs> Okay, so a complete turn of the table. Complete turn of the table. We're no longer talking about body types, characters. I'm talking about illustration, lighting, and illustration. Complete change, shift in tone, and speed. Um, 
no longer really far reaching, you know, branching out in topics, pulling from cinema, pulling from storytelling, pulling from, this is just lighting, um, <clears throat> which is fun, but also scary and horrific in its own way because lighting breaks or makes a painting. I need a water break. Let me just read what you guys are saying. Yeah, um, and because they're supposed to be elves, exactly. So definitely feels more reindeer-like because they are short people, but also because they are more cute in their appearances because of the slightly larger head. Yep. And their legs aren't as long. Uh, what about mixing tropes to create some conceptual contrast? That is a very, very abstract question, Hero. Um, and that is something that needs an entire hour for it. But the general rule to that is... <clears throat> When you're mixing tropes, you first have to do your research and see how tropes have been successfully mixed in movies. Um, so we see, or storytelling. So we see Sam from Lord of the Rings, who is a chunky, you know, he likes food. He's not very athletic. He's very homely. He's very um, uh, maternal but in the end <laughs> lifts the entire worry of mordor on his bow on of, of middle earth and and the in mordor and then just solves the problem sorry if it's spoiler alert you guys are like 80 years to live <laughs> they're not even 80 jesus it's like what's wrong with me 30s 70 and then 30 yeah 100 years too late um uh so what happens when we mix them is mostly to do with changes in the plot so it's but you still have a dominant trope okay hero that's the general answer you still need a dominant trope you have a secondary complementary trope that you're mixing in for that conceptual contrast so the hero that is round like a kung fu panda for instance um that's a conceptual twist or contrast <coughs> Okay, the shadows on the face don't seem... All right, let's talk about lighting. All right, um... Bad lighting. Bad! And the reason why it's bad is because you are giving me a very noted symbol, which is Buddha, under the tree. Which is, uh, maybe intentionally or unintentionally you did this. But Buddha under the tree is one of the most ancient pictures ever drawn. It is a very important symbol. And it has a lot of divinity in it. Lots of symmetry, tree of life, meditation, human self, no bad, no good. The, the Tao, uh, you know, all of that beautiful Buddhist piece. Eckhart Tolle, Alan Watts. All right. Very beautiful symbol. So bad thing about these pieces of art is that they don't have any universal lighting but looking at these will help inspire us because we are looking at a symbol so how do you create a symbol but in a realistic space you make it a silhouette so we need to make this a silhouette while not losing anything in the process meaning that it's not going to be that dark a silhouette we're still going to have a medium mid-tone mid to dark so we can still see some of the detail and actually have a painting <coughs> We're also dealing with a lot of symmetry. So you've thrown off the symmetry by making one half of the painting light, one half of the painting dark. It does not work because it's not reading with the divinity that it's demanding as the symbol, from the symbol it adopted. So you, you, you need to respect the symbol first and make sure the lighting reinforces the symbol. So there's just a little bit of storytelling in there. And the way we do that is by just... Um, Correcting some of these issues. Where are you? Why is light time not working? Why? Why? Oh, okay. That's why. Um, so that Buddha under the tree um, is a symbol of uh, enlightenment. That's how Buddha became Buddha, I believe. He just stayed under the tree and meditated for like 50 years or 100 years, was it? And so you've interrupted the symmetry by not giving us a realistic silhouette and by giving us this really, really half in, half out, half lighting. 
which you can keep as ambient light, but we really need you to maintain the silhouette because it's going to make this character feel a lot more mysterious, which is what that entire thing is. That's what it was all about when it came to, um, oh crap, I lost my brush. Um, when it comes to Buddha, when it comes to the, the self, when it comes to the chakras, when it comes to all that stuff, things get really mystical and really mysterious. So, I am using a purple mid-tone. Look at what happens. Look at how using Darken on your dark valley everywhere look at what it starts to do oh mama that looks beautiful right already that probably looks beautiful to me because i can see the end yet uh you guys haven't seen it so <coughs> i'm gonna adjust the levels so that we have a bit more of everything on either side we can see how we can still keep that ambient light coming from a distance but technically we are Still working with that silhouette. And I'm gonna get that color now, the purple color that I used earlier, and I'm just gonna throw it over everything that is in that silhouette. Not a 100% color uh, shift, it's just a haze, it's a wash. Okay, and then we are going to do the opposite and bringing in that color. The reason why you have such a this this happened when we did the um, the goddesses the harvest goddess. Do you guys remember that challenge? God, we've had a lot of fun this year, haven't we? We need to make a video summary. We want to get rid of the horizon line because the horizon line did something to that goddess, which made her feel small. She was now surrounded by an earth that was bigger than her. We want her to look like she's floating in the sky and is so big we don't even see the horizon. And that's what we're trying to do here. Even if it's supposed to be a horizon and a garden, we're trying to get rid of the garden's horizon line. Because it's going to minimize the world that we're trying to represent. These are very large strokes. Eventually I'll revert back to the original and start to adjust. But I'm bringing in some subsurface scattering on this cherry blossom. And that's the light from behind coming in and then just in the center of that we need to have a more pronounced and you, and you need like you need some more character to this tree you have used a very basic kindergarten level tree you could have gone for something a bit more twisted old looking grandma willow type of you know business like you could have done something like that this tree looks like a baby but again, you can always get away with something like that. Oh, the self is the baby and the human's only an egg ready to hatch. And, you know, all that stuff. Shut up, it's fine. All right, so I'm going now to sharpen some edges. And I'm going backward to before, just to show you the lighting difference. All right, and we can start bringing in some cool work on the roots just to give us a more interesting silhouette. It can be like some really cool Samurai Jack style roots, you know, they're just weird. That's what the trees were in the Samurai Jack um, shows. In those episodes, they, they were just weird. And I love that, I loved how weird the trees were, how weird plants were. I'm just bringing in my own design, uh, you know, character here. Don't really know where you would go for, with this, you know, the artist in question. But I'm just throwing in some really, really basic foliage anatomy. Nothing too extensive. Just something to help with that lack of character in the tree. And then we have um, the rest of these vines and leaves which could use a bit more pronunciation. Again, we're just breaking that silhouette. The light in the background, that yellow, I don't like it. Because 
we don't really need it. We need an environment color that's going to complement the divinity around. That yellow seems more like a murky, swampy yellow than a yellow that's going to help the scene. Actually, that's even worse. Uh, white might be a better idea. I feel like, no, that's, oh, that's what the, oh, as soon as I grace killed, I saw the problem. It's not white, it's not bright enough back there. So that yellow might work now if we... Just dodge it. Oops. No. So. Yep, absolutely was the problem. Yo, man, always grayscale if you can. <coughs> and then zoom out and zoom out too. I'm just going to increase the reflective kind of strength in that tree. And then we're just going backward to see where we are. So there's going to be a lot of bloom and a lot of bounce light from either side. So what you can do is start using that bounce color. Even if you don't like this much vibrance, let's say we're going to take a fraction of where we were before. It's still an improvement because we're, we're working with a more dynamic lighting situation. And if you guys are scared of silhouettes, I mean, just do one. Do one as a study. Open up Porsche Studio if you have it and, and do a basic silhouette study so you're not so scared of it anymore so that when it's time to stage with a silhouette you can do it and this is really really easy work I'm just going to bring in that balance light so the general ambience has created a shadow on one side but the reflection of that general ambience maybe we'll do more reflect more balance light on one side than the other but we'll still affect both sides so we'll put in more here but we'll put enough here that we can still see the part that's hidden. You guys understand me? You guys follow me? What time is it? 6.04. It's okay. <clears throat> okay, so we are... So I'm just laying down the color and using my eraser to kind of help find the edges. And because it's supposed to be a soft character, I'm just going to use my soft brush on a larger scale. That way I can get the benefit of the silhouette of the soft brush to help me re re like uh, assert the characterization, which is a very peaceful character. So the colors are an issue. The colors have not been balanced yet. Lots of problems with the colors, and that's mostly because you chose colors from every which way and you didn't really govern them by any one atmosphere so we're kind of unified the colors a little bit so far but not enough and I just want to get this whole issue out of the way with the values I'm, I'm really just thinking in grayscale I'm just seeing things in grayscale right now Do you see what happens when we use that universal white? It's really helping. So there's something you can do that'll further this. Pink and green are wonderful colors together. They're just lovers. And you guys need to you need to start discovering these cool color combos. Try to cast a shadow off this leaf on that leaf. We're still getting some bounce white. So pink and green can be your basic kind of motif here so we can get this cherry blossom pink use the yellow of the light source we can, we can bring it everywhere but we can start throwing some of that pink as the unifier color and it's going to be tricky throwing this down at first but like we can have a lot of pink and a lot of green starting with the eyes one thing that bothered me is that you chose yellow pupils uh, but red, I mean, yellow, white to the eye, but, you know, the different color pupils and iris, I mean, and you have no color unification that the white of the eyes couldn't even adapt the pink. 
the saturation was also non-vibrant, non-interesting. You can still have saturation in a silhouette, especially if it's a mild silhouette like this one. And I'm just trying to add that. You really do have to plan your palette. There's only so much I can do to pull all this off. I'm going to throw that green onto the tree. So it seems more like a tree covered in moss that is vibrant and high in vitality than just a brown tree. Um, I'll just see what I can do with the saturation. It's so... no. It's not going to work. It's mostly because we don't have any unifier value at all. Or any color. I mean, values have been corrected for the most part right now. But it's just the colors that are a little bit... On, the colors are in the wrong hue, so meaning wrong cool to warm, and colors are in the wrong saturation. So all colors are saturating and desaturating as if they're from different light sources at different times of the painting. And here I'm, I'm saturating stylistically, but I'm also making sure they all reach the same level. See that? When I saturate that, it turns into back into that ugly green from earlier. So i got to get that pastel green and go back and saturate. And just throw that purple back on top. Pastel green again. And then you have this belt which is throwing off your values. It should not really be that bright. It's pretty hidden. And then the, the expression is kind of otherworldly, which is working it's except so much is going on um which is acceptable because it's supposed to be a, like a like imagine walking up to buddha buddha's aging meditated body it's really scary right so there is that fear factor in it that mysticism that spiritual mysticism the unknown the, spirit, uh, the supernatural i guess so that's the ambient light coming in. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to interrupt the silhouette. So it's mostly just ambience. And the far side of that tree is a little bit too dark. Merge down. <clears throat> So the character is more in a silhouette than the tree is because the tree is cylindrical and wraps the light conforms to the circular or the globular I guess circumference of the cylinder so it'll curve more the light can travel sneak in a little bit more so it might be a little bit lighter on the outsides, even if it's silhouette. But the character should be separate. It should have a bit more of a pronounced silhouette on them, separate from the tree. But it's those colors that are killing me right now. You really just want to have a uniform color but you want to have, technically what you're supposed to be doing technically is this. So when we make things technically, we can, we know, we can kind of figure out what we need to do next. So objects in the light, like the blossoms here, the, the leaves, can stay that bright if the light is directly behind. But it's not a complete silhouette. It's half and half out. Something we can do is just make a, a rose glow over everything, which is super stylized. Oops. Don't know why I did that. Color. Why? Why are you doing that? Okay. Alright. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know why it's acting like this. But it doesn't matter. So that's that rose overlay. 
I was just trying to balance your colors while doing a little as little work as possible so the stream can come to a close. Lighten is also great to just, with a color, lighten as well as level out all the values. And then we have that earth color that we need to maintain. And then we also have some of those odd super greens you have. Again, none, nothing was controlled in hues and nothing was controlled in um, level. I'm going to use lighten. We're going to crack this. See, this is just problem solving. It's just one by one. We're solving all of this. We're getting rid of that unusual value you had in the distance there. That blue which wasn't doing much for the scene at all. I'm going to kind of just let that pink glow outward. I'm going to reinforce that shadowed kind of upper darkness at the top, that shade that frames the painting as well as brings us back to more realistic lighting situation. Place for the title. I'm gonna throw in some shadow at the. Fo I love the sleeping fox, but I would love if the fox was sitting up just a little bit. He's kind of lounging. And it's this color that's pissing me off. It's not really yellow. It's not really golden. And I need to correct that. To saturate that outer color out there. Getting rid of that horizon line really helped us. Okay, so we have some realism happening. I'd like some more. So what we can do for quick fast fast food realism is cast shadows. So I'm going to try to salvage some of what's going on by creating a pattern of shadow. I'll just somehow sneak in there. So, see that? That's uh, not really great, but it'll do. Okay, and then a pattern of shadow this way. Which is just that upper part, that shadow from earlier. Just patterns of cast shadows. Just to reinforce that ambient light coming from the top left. Really, it's just problem solving. And you just do it large to small, universal down to local objects reflecting on each other. So cast shadow that way off this object, onto that object. Really, really basic atmospheric rules. Nothing, you know, high theory or super duper difficult to pull off. Just cast shadows all going in the same direction. But it's a lot to manage. This is, this is an illustration that is a result of bad referencing, unaware of like what it is that, what, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you doing this, Photoshop? Like, take it easy. Fuck. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, before, after. <clears throat> I just want more of that rose glow. Um, then there's just a need more vibrance on the character. So I'm going to click on protect tones. But I, I, I can remember like it's such a funny business. I've got to make sure. I feel like the hands would be more relieved from the shadow and the head would be more in shadow. So the hands and the head should be of a different exposure. And of the hands, the palm is the most exposed, this upper palm right here, and some of the fingers. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm building levels, 
which is, see that, it's reading instantly. So, before all that, see how flat it felt after. And then we go back to that secondary light we revealed and get it back. This is if we were super technical and realistic. And this can just keep going. We can just keep going and going and layering in more. But do you see how easy it is to address the local? Do you see how we approached, we got to this level? Because we, we, we handled the universal light source. So we worked in levels. Cast shadow is needed off of that. <coughs> And the color problem, um, uh, one thing that you can do is really, really tricky, but you can start just completely going ham and just trying to uni unify the whole scene with a mid-tone blue. Um, and then just messing around with levels. And that, what that will do is give us, we'll get to lighten. Are you lighten and just raise that, saturate it, and then just drop the and just get that color back and just completely unify and, and then just redo the levels. <laughs> completely unify that dark area with one color, one consistent color, and then fight that color, that blue, with the pink in the background. I would get rid of the yellow completely. <clears throat> and you can do this with any color, basically, but what we're trying to do is just find a cool value to work with that'll work with that pink. And green and pink are just, like I said, they're lovers. They're mad, match made in heaven. So... So we're just unifying one section of the painting and we can just start stylizing. So explosions of pink in the foreground, pink against the background, no yellow. Okay. Um, because I don't want to go that route because it's too experimental for class, I'm just going to correct the levels one last time for the foreground. Select and go back and just keep the same exposure back here. So it feels like she's more floating in the clouds, but there is a horizon. We know that the tree is founded on something. It's mostly that yellow in the background that's kind of annoying me. Because, you know, fields aren't really yellow. Clouds aren't really yellow. I'm, I'm not sure what you were doing with the yellow. Is it is it a sunshine yellow? Is it like an orangey yellow? Um, what color really does it need to, does it have to be? Does it have to be any particular color? It's not doing much for the environment. If it sh should be anything, it should be like a green. Kind of moving into the distance. Or it should be like a sky blue also desaturated somewhat and a little bit brighter. You see how unimportant that background was that we just turned it into white and we don't miss it? It's mostly about the character. We can make it pink to complete the piece which I, which I wanted at the start. That pink kind of works. Just I just like uniformity. Oh, we can go back to blue. It's just that where it was before it was just blah. wasn't doing much. So I would say pink is nicer because we have that pink green motif now. It's more uniform. And then we have a more complete silhouette everywhere else. 
And now that pink is the atmospheric perspective color. So we can just grab that color and just throw anything that is off into the distance with that pink atmosphere color and suddenly we will have a really, really cool representation of the distance. Nice. Tiny little, tiny little, you know, tool that has done a lot of work. Interesting seeing the process, the problem solving process that is painting and illustration like happen in front of you. Want to get rid of that brown, but just it's, it's, it's a tricky, a tricky little fucker. And then you also have that detail problem. Like it's just you're giving us too much detail on the edges of the canvas and you're just overloading inf with information. This is perfect because it's helping us snake back down to the main focus, but this has more detail in it than, than they do. Every one of these leaves has a cast shadow, but the face barely has any cast shadows on it or ba barely any detail. You didn't have a lot of edge work happening on the face. But we're definitely moving in a better direction, though levels in the foreground could have been more uniform. I, I, I'm just moving with the pink of that bat, of the trees. I would still do a little bit more experimentation, but definitely more of divinity, more glow. And I'm just going to bring in that glow continued. From this distance, I usually um, try to do something interesting with the uh, with the the effects, with the lighting. You have this really really cool character whose eyes are glowing magically, but you barely have any magic happening at all. Like that that does a lot for the painting. You know, I mean, it helps with the focal point. If you're if you are going for that like dying Buddha body because Buddha's body became starved in his meditative state, so you know saturation is always a great magical element to bring in. But I understand why you would want to leave the face blushless. You also need to work on these like little hair piece. I mean, you could have done something a lot more interesting, you know, layering of different aspects of the, or like different, like the fold, the fabric folds of the leaves and curvature. Basic form study if you approach it properly. <clears throat> but before, <clears throat> overexposed always means white. We're always going towards white. If you if you have to have a warm overexposed color, I mean, you can shift things over into yellow for the background, but that would mean something very different for the color palette that you're working from. But now everything is so level, you can shift it anywhere and it'll still pretty much look proper, except for that fox, which isn't doing much. But do you see how things can look a little bit more acceptable? as we shift. That tree is too much, too much. The tree looks flat, so I would darken the tree slowly, but not delete like, the character. That's the tree. Feels a little bit darker now. Just a quick fix. Okay. But because you don't have much happening in the character, um, that's why the character kind of just looks scary uh, or still. But again, that adds to supernatural divinity, so it's your choice. I feel like it still reads as the same character. Yellow doesn't do yellow in a silhouette. Um, I'm having fun with the yellow, with the pink, but you can go for a different color combination. 
just look at one aspect. Look, for instance, the, the the background color. Like, look at one aspect of it. This fox is annoying. Color. I'm just gonna mute his color. He'll still read as a fox. He just doesn't have to destroy the painting in the process. Okay, and then dare I? One last little color, uh, level six. Just for that boost. But it still looks terrible to me. It, but the before and after, um, at least there's a jump in the lighting. The, the, it's not the painting that looks terrible. It's the lighting that doesn't really do much for the symbol you're representing, which is the symbol is unified billions of people over centuries. Um, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful, divine symbol that you're using, which is meditation under a tree. There's the, the tree narrative is like it's found in the Bible, it's found in the Quran, it's found, it's found everywhere, meditation under a tree. It's, you know, the whole tree, tree of life, apple. But you staged it with like, <laughs> like that's the sound I hear when I see this kind of lighting. It may, in your imagination, or as described in a book, seem divine. Oh, the green, the, the, the fields were green and the trees were lush with 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 the color of the sun and 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 everything blossomed that's how you're drawing you're drawing like you're narrating no you gotta like really go for it the the, the scene boomed with the light you didn't see anything and it was just moments of light that's how you would describe describe a scene like you're a good writer that's how you're going to paint it you're you're, you're you have to go dramatic when you're especially when you're talking about this particular type of scene so these are my interpretations i'm just putting pink wherever i feel like it it's your character do whatever you want with it the the, the plant over here needs more saturation but you know based off just for the sake of the critique we do need more contrast and a more defined um silhouette because that will help bring back the divin divinity and you see how we didn't lose we didn't lose anything let's cast shadow of that is going to fall here. We didn't lose the painting by throwing in a silhouette. Nope. We still have the painting intact. We still have the characters visible. It just added to the beauty. Cast shadow. So when you have see-through objects layering on top of each other, you they're going to, you know, layer. Even if it's subsurface, we're just going to have a slight cast shadow of one leaf on another. It seemed like this flower here was a symbol. So you had two beautiful colors, green and pink, and then obviously you had that pink, and you didn't do much with it. And the pink dominated because if you're sitting under a cherry blossom, that cherry, no matter what you're wearing, people are going to be looking at the cherry blossom. Okay. And I kind of want to throw some of that in the distance just some of that just so that we can have something interesting we're using symmetry to our advantage all right any questions at all for this critique maybe it is a mischievous but divine uh, spiritual character um all right any questions? So before, flat, confused light source, no cast shadows, divine scene without reinforcing the symmetry, your lighting interrupted the symbol, um, colors mismatched, different hues, different levels, different saturation, my god, um, bad gesture on the fox though, though it is very cute it seems like he's sleeping after more booming light more bloom more of a divine scene if this was a book cover or a splash art for a game or something it would definitely serve the purpose if this was a basic scene from a comic book i would still deliver it with this kind of presentation because it's a moment of introduction if you've ever watched anime those moments of introduction do it all you know every character big or small is introduced in a really dramatic way. 
We need the relief on that tree. The tree isn't just going to be one big bulk of bark. framing just so we can have a gradient toward the top the flower is the spirit of the dead fox hmm oh so the fox is dead oh my god i'm so sad now <laughs> pink and green are a match made in heaven um foxes have no respect for religious symbols they sleep where they want <laughs> just like cats <laughs> oh my god I just breathed in some spit okay um Thank you everyone for coming to this critique. I hope you guys learned something. There weren't a lot of pieces submitted for the elf design. The one that I picked at four o'clock was the one that I critiqued, but if more are posted and I have time on Thursday, I will take a look at them. Um, if you want to become a pat patron for the new year, my aim is a thousand patrons of $1. If everyone on the Reddit joined as a $1 patron, I wouldn't need to pick up on or wait for or encourage a 100k sub just so that my channel is taken a little more seriously and my videos are recommended all of my past critique hours are just in the dust they're not getting recommended no one is commenting on them they're just lost so i'm going to try to have a campaign where i tweet my videos and talk about what i covered that day even old ones from like last year i'll still tweet them um, if you guys can help me out and tweet them so that I could retweet them, that would be amazing. But if you want to join just as a dollar patron, you can on patreon.com slash just a But if you'd like educational material, monthly, uh, uh, assignments, you want to, um, start, uh, building your portfolio. That's what we do in my apprenticeship. It's a low pressure, high expectancy, deadline based, uh, portfolio building apprenticeship every piece is a portfolio piece we did tons of work on character design the last two months um, and amazing like amazing submissions from portraiture and everything and we just went back to a more relaxed int but slightly intensive form study environment uh, for this month um, uh, and uh, you know just to end off round off the year by thinking about realism <clears throat> and proper rendering but if you want to join for educational material or any of the tiers in between you can but if you just want to join as a patron you learned something today um do join as a dollar patron and uh portrait studio will be on sale this week and possibly tonight um it will come with a video so don't worry and um the update i, I know i've been saying this for half the year but things just keep getting added on top, new features, new ways of programming, new ways of building, uh, you know, or whatever Abu is doing in there, in his workroom, in his office. Um, new things that I would like to have added, uh, bugs that keep popping up out of the ground. We want things to be perfect and run smoothly and make sure that there are no bugs and all the performance profiles still work with, uh, with the new addition. Um, uh, of, of features so thank you everyone for watching today i'll see you guys on thursday at 5 p.m eastern time can't believe i did today don't even know how that happened but i guess i can do it still i will see you guys on thursday bye guys